Hello you guys, it's Katie and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm sharing with you guys a crochet and chat with me video. So I'm going to be answering your questions that you guys asked me on my community tab and on my Instagram and I am going to be crocheting a little gummy bear. So this is Sweet Snuggles Light Yarn and then I have a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And the only other material is going to be stuffing and a little stitch marker because for these little gummy bears I don't even put safety eyes in them. So I will link the pattern below and the yarns and everything, of course. But with that, let's go ahead and get started on the questions as I crochet, of course. So first I'm starting out with the community tab questions and then I'll move on to Instagram ones. So first is, I was wondering how you create an idea for your crochet patterns. Do you brainstorm a physical sketch first or get inspired from other crochet items? So the answer is kind of a mix of all of this except I don't actually draw up a sketch because I'm not a good drawler at all. This is why I crochet. I'm not very good at any other art form. But anyways, I normally at least have a vision in my head for what I want a pattern to look like. And then of course it's just trial and error until the item I'm crocheting turns out looking the way I want it to. But in general, I just think of ideas randomly and I have a long, long, long list on my phone of different ideas for different sorts of animals and plushies and all kinds of items that I want to make patterns for at some point or at least in the moment I thought it was a good pattern idea so I wrote it down and sometimes I get inspired by maybe a movie or a TV show or a stuffed animal I see in real life or something that somebody else has crocheted or myself has crocheted but of course you don't want to copy anybody else so if I ever do get an idea that's like oh this is from this other person's pattern it's obviously something that I'm going to make a lot different it's not me copying them but sometimes if you see something like a crochet gummy bear you might think oh you know what I should crochet more foods I'm gonna crochet this and then obviously that's not copying at all if you make a whole different food but anyways inspiration comes from everywhere I feel like mainly for me it is random things I see in stores when I'm shopping or online or stuff like that, but pretty much anywhere. All right, next question. What made you first get into crochet and what was your first crochet project? Also I love your videos. Thank you so much. I love when you guys tell me that you enjoy my videos. It seriously makes my day every single time I hear that from you guys. So my first ever project, first I'll answer is actually up here with my new camera setup. You can't see this in the background, I don't think. But I have this draft, which was my first ever project. I have a video from about like two years ago, I think now. Maybe only a year ago. I don't know. Anyways, I have a video from a while ago of me recreating this project. And that's what this draft is. So these two drafts have been in my video background for a while. And this is the first project I ever made and finished. My first ever project that I started was a blanket and never finished that because it took forever and I got discouraged with it. But the first project I ever made and finished was this little draft and then like two or three years later I recreated this draft based on this as a video. So that was my first project ever and then as far as what got me into crocheting, my grandma crocheted and I always thought it was really cool. And I just happened to be hanging out with a friend that mentioned that she crocheted and I was like, wait, that's really cool. Can you teach me? And she of course said yes and she came over and spent the night at my house that very same night and taught me to crochet and that's when I started that first blanket project and then I did also make this draft with her. And she made one alongside with me that looked way better than mine, of course. And mine looked like that when it was done. And she helped me with things like magic circle and stuff because obviously I didn't get the hang of that for a while. Most beginners aren't gonna get the hang of that. So the only reason it even got finished probably is because she was there making one and helping me with it. Next question. You may have mentioned this at some point, but what hook size do you use for burnout blanket for amigurumi? Um, for that question, I'm just going to answer this question in increments because there's a couple different ones. I use a 7mm hook with Burnett blanket majority of the time. Sometimes if I feel like my tension is 
really loose I could do like a 6.5 but majority of the time it is a 7 millimeter and I feel like I have pretty normal tension. Sometimes it can be tight or loose of course if like my hand hurts or something but otherwise my tension is pretty normal so yeah a 7 millimeter is what works for me. And then also do you use yarn over, yarn under, or a combination of both? It's okay if you're not sure. I didn't even know there was a difference until recently. I also didn't know there was a difference until recently. And if you guys don't know what she's talking about, yarning over is like this. And then yarning under is like this. And some people do both. Some people do one or the other. I have always just yarned over. And that's what I've always done. I really don't know. I mean, I've seen videos on what the difference is, but I just have a habit of yarning over and I feel like my plushies look super cute, so I'm not going to change what I'm doing. <laughs> but yes, yarning over is my answer for that. Next, I have a question on the channel aspect of things. How do you come up with ideas for your videos and how do you manage your time to make sure you're ahead on uploads while juggling market prep and other social media? Do you have any organization tips on that. Okay, first, video ideas. I, again, kind of with like crochet patterns and stuff, I just come up with random ideas from pretty much anything. Sometimes it's a YouTube comment that somebody leaves asking a question, and I'm like, oh, you know, that would make a great video to do like a full topic on. So I write that down on my video ideas list. Again, another long list on my phone. Or sometimes I get an idea from another sort of video and it becomes like a series. Like when I started doing How Much Can I Crochet in One Day, that's kind of become a series on my channel because I can do that so many different ways. I can do How Many Things Can I Crochet in One Day for Halloween and do pumpkins or ghosts or whatever for different holidays. Or I can do How Many Things Can I Crochet in One Day and do different colors. Like recently I did green for St. Patrick's Day. So there's so many different spin-offs of that, so that's another good way to kind of come up with video ideas, is having something that can be made into a series pretty easily. As well as in general, of course, I get video ideas from other YouTubers sometimes, if that's ever the case. I do always shout out the YouTuber at the beginning of the video and link their video in the description below that I saw from them to, of course, give credit where credit is due. But in general, a lot of times it's just ideas that pop into my head and I just write them down and end up doing them at some point. And then as far as managing time to make sure your head on uploads and uh, market prepping and everything, honestly, currently market prepping, currently filming this the night before my market because I'm behind on regular videos and I'm not the best at being ahead sometimes, especially when it comes to a market. Normally I'm about a week or two ahead when I'm not like heavily market prepping, but yeah, recently I've not been ahead on my uploading schedule because I'm doing so much market prep, but in general, I normally plan out my videos about a month in advance from when I'm going to post them. So around the first of the month, I sit down and write out a list of what I want to be uploaded on what day. And my normal video schedule is Monday and Fridays, 2.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I come up with, okay, this week for Monday, I'm going to upload this video. This week for Tuesday, I'm going to upload this video. And so on and so forth for the whole month. And at least like once a month I sit down to do that, if not like twice a month if I come up with other ideas and I want to plan that far in advance. And when it comes to planning out videos, I do that on Google Calendar. I have my Apple Calendar on my phone that I use for all my personal stuff. So like when I have doctor's appointments or something like that, that goes on my phone calendar. And then the Google Calendar I have on my computer as well as on my phone, the app. And the Google Calendar is just my business stuff, so I have every single video that I'm going to post for the next month planned out there, as well as I have the YouTube Shorts that I'm going to post for the other days of the week. I have when new patterns are going to be released listed on there. Pretty much everything for my business I have on a calendar, which helps very much with staying organized. And a lot of times I do work a week in advance. So for example, if it's like Monday, I may end up working on the video for the next Monday. 
just so that I am a full week ahead of schedule. And of course having the calendar to know what's going on next week, what content I'm posting next week is a good way to obviously keep track of all of that. So that is my like organization tip for that. And then when it comes to other content, like Instagram, for example, now they let you schedule your post if your account is a business profile. So you can schedule your post up to like a week in advance, I believe. And that's what I've been doing recently, especially while I'm market prepping, because sometimes I will forget to post on Instagram otherwise. So I will sit down like once a week and take some good pictures of stuff I've crocheted recently and then schedule those posts on Instagram to automatically go up at like 1 p.m. ish on each day of the week because I post every single day on Instagram. And then for like TikTok, TikTok is a platform that I just have casual content over there. So I mainly just like share what I've made that day or I share like, okay, let's see how much I can crochet in this many hours today. Or, hey guys, I just bought this for my markets and I wanted to show you. Anything random like that that is more like casual content I share over on TikTok. And that isn't anything I really plan out in advance because of course it's just going to depend on what I'm doing that specific day as to what's going up on TikTok. TikTok is more in real time. Also, I'm off all my stitches, so frogging. This is what happens when I try to crochet and talk at the same time. But anyways, I think that was everything for that question, so let me move on to the next one. So I asked for these questions three weeks ago, so I'm sorry that I'm uh, taking so long to get back to them. I've had so many other videos I wanted to post beforehand. But anyways, um, this question is, I watched your video on starting to sell items in an in-person store. My question is, do they require you to have a business license or do you already have one? I do not have a business license. That's something that once market season is over, which for me is going to be in May, thankfully. So I have like a month from now until it's over. And I have a lot of things on my to-do list as far as like updating my website and opening a P.O. box and making my business an LLC and getting a business license and all of that kind of stuff that I've needed to do for a long time that I've been putting off because I'm constantly market prepping that I'm going to do once market season is over for me. But anyways, I don't have a business license and the place I'm selling at does not require a business license. Now, of course, it's going to depend where you're selling at for markets or selling in an in-person store. It's going to depend and it probably depends on your state as well. But as of right now, I don't have a business license, but also this year, 2023, will be my first year actually making enough money to have to file taxes. So I assume I probably have to have a business license when it comes to that too. But of course, whenever I go through that process, I can share that with you guys if you want. But as of right now, I don't have a business license and they did not require it at the store I'm selling at. And at the store I'm selling at, it's actually like under me personally. It's not really under my like Katie being creative business name. So that probably also has something to do with it. Okay, next question. Do you have a favorite small yarn shop that you've been to? So not a Michael's, Joann's, but a small business. It could be online. I'm curious because I'm always looking for new shops. I unfortunately... I always say I live in Tampa, but I actually don't live that close to Tampa. Tampa's just the biggest, like, town near me. So I say that, of course, for safety reasons. <laughs> but anyways, all of the yarn shops that are, like, local small business ones are in Tampa. And there's only, like, two or three that I know of, at least, that come up, like, when you Google yarn shops near me. Other than, like, Joanne and Hobby Lobby and Michaels, of course, that show up. And I would love to shop at smaller ones if I had some close to me but they're just not close to me and I'm like never in Tampa because Tampa's so busy so I'm never in Tampa. If I happen to be in Tampa I would stop by but I'm just never in Tampa. I do want to branch out into shopping from maybe some online people that like hand dye yarn or just small yarn shops in general that sell online so if you guys have any suggestions for that definitely leave stores and websites 
in the comments below because I would also love to shop from some small businesses. I love supporting small businesses in general. I'm sure you guys know that. I mean, I have a small business myself. I think we all love supporting small businesses. And um, yeah, I would love to support some more. I just don't really know about any yet. So I would love to hear your suggestions if you have any that you like to shop from. But in general, I have been a few times to some of them in Tampa and they are really nice stores. So if you look up like local yarn shops in Tampa, Florida or something like that, you'd probably find the exact ones. I just can't think of the names of them off the top of my head right now. But anyways, last question that is on my community tab here on YouTube that I asked again like three weeks ago. Sorry guys that it took so long to get back to these. But anyways, this question is why do you love Burnett Blanket so much? And there's quite a few reasons. First off, I feel like as far as price-wise, well, they aren't as good price-wise as some other yarns, but for, in general, plush, soft, blanket-type yarns, they are $11.99 regular price, but Joanne, which is where I almost only shop, it is so much better of a deal because of the sales they have going on, and the sales are so often. So that is one of the main reasons, is price, as well as they have so many color options in Burnett Blanket that they do not have in other blanket yarns. And I love having a ton of color options. I don't love mixing other types of yarn together within the same pattern. And if I need something that's going to have a bunch of different colors for the same project, then of course Burnett is my go-to because they have so many different colors. And if you guys didn't know, I also use Burnett Blanket Brights and Burnett Baby Blanket as well as Burnett Blanket all together because they all are basically the same exact yarn. So it gives you even more color options when you include all of those as well. So those are my main reasons for why it's my favorite, but I do have a video of ranking my top 10 favorite yarns and that video I go in lots of detail for why each one of those yarns is my favorite. So if you guys want to watch that, I can link that below for you. All right, now I'm gonna switch to the questions I got on Instagram, which I think is only a handful, but let me check. Okay, so <laughs> I got a question here that is, when's the next yarn swap? Like I said, this was a few weeks ago when I asked these questions. So that was before I posted the yarn swap with Natalie that you guys would have seen recently. So <laughs> yeah, if you didn't check out that video, go check it out, but Again, sorry that I'm getting back to these questions so late after you guys ask them. But anyways, on to the next question because that one's kind of self-explanatory now that I already posted the video. So next thing is I want to sell plushies at my next market, but they don't fit my more neutral colors for my brand. Okay, so what I would say for this is two things. Either stick to plushies that are more neutral colors there's lots of things you could do in like neutral colors. Let's say your colors are like brown and tan or something like that. You could do teddy bears that are brown and tan. You could do like a sloth that's brown and tan. You could even do like mushrooms that just have a little bit of red and they're mainly tan. Stuff like that if you want to include plushies or if you do want to make colorful items that don't really fit into your branding. You can obviously make things like the price tags that are still the color of your branding so it ties in. You could also have them in like a little bin maybe that is the color of your branding so it ties in. All kinds of stuff like that is an option to kind of tie it into your branding if you want to still make something colorful that is not necessarily in your coloring of your brand. So. That is my suggestions for that. Next is how do you secure safety eyes? When I use blanket yarns, the eyes seem to come out easily. Recently, I started burning the back of safety eyes, which if you guys haven't seen that done before, I saw a video of it on Instagram. I'll find it again and link it in the description below for you guys so you know what I'm talking about. I found that that is a really good way, especially when you're using like small eyes on thick blanket yarn to keep it in 
but I also have a video on securing the safety eyes with E6000. That is the really the only other way that I secure safety eyes and I can also link that below for you because I feel like both methods are good. It just kind of depends on what you prefer. If you don't want to get a lighter close to your project, then I recommend the E6000. If you want to try burning the back of the eyes, then go for it. But either one of those should work well. Also, using bigger safety eyes for bigger sorts of blanket yarn kind of help because you may have more gaps in your project and if the eyes are bigger, there is less of a chance of them sliding out, basically. So that's also something to think about. All right, next question is, when did you learn to crochet? The answer for that is December of 2018 when I had just turned 16. And then next is anything you don't like making. Not really. The main thing I don't like making is any sort of big projects. So that's why you guys see me make plushies and you don't see me make like clothing items or blankets because I'm not good at finishing projects that take a long time. But as far as plushies, the only thing that bothers me is having to make the same thing over and over again. So even if you guys see that I have like 10 of one singular item at a market, it is because I've made that throughout like a month or so, all 10 of them. I haven't made all 10 in one day because I would get very bored doing that. So that's like my only other thing that I don't like making is anything that I make too many times in a row, basically. All right, I basically just finished this gummy bear. I have to finish off and weave in the end, but unfortunately I forgot to bring scissors in here. So I'm gonna just do that after I'm done filming. And really quick, I'm gonna answer the last two questions that I got on here. So next is, what is your best advice for someone who is new to crochet and wants to start a business? So honestly, just go for it. I have quite a few videos on first off how to start selling your items as well as how to start at markets and all of that kind of stuff. But I definitely recommend starting to sell to family and friends as a good way to get your name out and maybe get customers that are friends of friends and all of that kind of stuff to kind of branch out and you can also get an idea of what you like making so you know what you want to sell within your business and then once you've done that and you feel like okay I'm pretty good at crocheting I know what I want to sell I know I primarily want to sell plushies or I know I primarily want to sell clothing or whatever it is then maybe branch out to markets or selling on Etsy, whatever's gonna work best for you, and go from there. All right, final thing on here is free patterns you use for plushies. So this gummy bear is a free pattern. I also use a lot of my own free patterns that are for plushies, if you guys haven't checked those out. A few just off the top of my head. I have a mini frog free pattern. I have a bee free pattern. I have a two-in-one dog and bunny free pattern. I have a mini mushroom free pattern. I have a heart keychain free pattern. So many free patterns for me. So in general, check out my Instagram and Ribbler for those patterns. And I also am going to do, hopefully soon, a video on patterns that I make for my markets that sell really well. And a lot of those patterns are free. So I will, of course, have those patterns linked within the description of that video once I come out with that video. So that also will be a good way to find a lot of patterns that I use all in one video. But anyways, you guys, that was the last question for today's video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of today's video. And if you enjoyed, I would love to hear that. I'd also love to hear if you have any other questions, maybe, that maybe I said something in this video that you were like, oh, I wonder more about this. Let me know in the comments and I can either answer them in the next crochet and chat with me video or I can answer them in a reply comment as well. Now, if you guys do wanna see more videos from me, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the post notification bell that way you know every single time I upload a brand new video. And if you guys do wanna see more from me in general, you can always check out more videos of mine, my blog, my Etsy shop, my Ribbler shop, all of my social medias and my second channel, all of that is always included in the description box of every single video for you guys. So with all of that, thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and I will see you guys here in the next one. Goodbye!